So graphically. We're three games into the Western Conference final, so it's time to see how the Leafs and the Canucks measure up. The best gauge is to gauge the best. Wendell Clark and Trevor Linden refuse to give an inch. Their strengths we can see. But Doug Gilmore and Pavel Burry are immeasurably tougher. Do we know killer meters? And what device interprets genius? Pavel Bure, hockey's answer to the tape measure home run. Is it any wonder the Russian rocket feels $4 million a year is in the ballpark? Pavel's back-breaking goals have been the breakaways. The men in the made-to-measure suits are both aware that the Canucks number 10 has been the difference thus far. Ironically for Toronto, the best individual performance has also come at the hands of the team's best feat. Soccer star Peter Zezel went on a scoring tangent in game one of the series. His even strength markers, including the overtime winner, have been the lone indication the Leafs have the tools five on five. It'd be a stretch to suggest either club is taller in goal. Both netminders have three playoff shutouts, but early in the trek in that category, Captain Kirk gets the edge. So how do these counter pats measure up? Well, based on Vancouver's home improvement Friday, a 2-1 series lead, and with a game tonight and one Tuesday scheduled here, there's little doubt now. The tale of the tape tells us the Leafs will have to reach down if they're to reach the final over the cascading Canucks. The folks on the West Coast have gone through a few refreshments this afternoon. A splendid day in Vancouver, B.C., halfway through the long weekend, two-thirds of the way through the long haul, known as the Stanley Cup playoffs. We get set for game four, the Toronto Maple Leafs at Vancouver Canucks. Vancouver with a very convincing 4-0 win in the first game here have vaulted themselves into the favorites role. Toronto was outclassed in all departments in game three on Thursday. The goaltenders, of course, Potvin and McLean. Felix Potvin faces a huge test tonight. Leafs can't afford to go down 3-1 against this Vancouver team, and you can bet they'll be coming at Potvin all night. Kirk McLean really on a roll. 29 saves for his fifth career shutout in Game 3. There's Curry Fraser, the referee, with Pat Capuzzo and Jerry Gauthier, the linesman. Bill McCreary is the backup official for this game. And we are just about set for game four from the Pacific Coliseum in Vancouver. Lyndon Burry, Adams, Babbage, and Dedek for Vancouver, McCown, Lafave, and up front, Clark, Gilmore, and Gartner getting the start. And we are underway. McCown put it up on the boards, and there's Burry right off the bat, shooting it in. Adams is going after it. So is Lyndon. Linden comes up with the puck in the corner. Coming out in front and he can't get a shot. It's cleared ahead to center ice. Gartner doesn't catch up to it. Linden fires it back in for the Vancouver Canucks. Lefebvre back. Gilmore sweeping around the net will pick it up and drop it for him. Lefebvre, long pass. That just went astray at center ice. And Babbage shot it away, but Clark has it and brings it in. Dinnick missed him with a hit. And around the net is Adams. He lost it, but there was Linden again to shoot it out. And the Canucks use that clearing play to change. And Lafayne shoots it from center. In comes Eastwood. Eastwood on the boards, and Gartner couldn't find it. Cleared back out to center, and Ronnie was skating in. Ronnie dropped it back, and the so shot doesn't reach the net. It went off a stick and got up high into the crowd. Well, the most dangerous player on both teams, Pavel Bure. Toronto Maple Leafs cannot afford to make neutral zone turnovers when he's on the ice or careless breakout passes. The best offensive player for the Leafs versus the best one for the Canucks. There are the statistics for game number three. Pavel Bury's been on a, a, quite a stroll in the last 54 games. 50 goals and 84 points. Bob, what happened to him in those four games that he didn't score? Waiting for <laughs> these playoffs, I'd say. Boy, he has turned it up a notch or two, hasn't he? Here come the Leafs. Govadaris coming in there. Govadaris can't get a shot. Clean just stood up to him, and he had a roll off his stick. 
seeing his first action in these playoffs. Govadares takes it again and shoots it in. Blume for Vancouver. Coming back out to the line and rolling it up on the right wing, and Jelena had it just scoot away from him. Leafs get it back to center. The Canucks pick it up and bring it in. Andrew Chuck intercepted. One man back. Andrew Chuck decides to shoot, and that's a stop by McLean. That was rather routine from the blue line. The shot by Andrew Chuck. McLean looking so poised in the net for Vancouver. He's having a great run in these playoffs. Shot back in by Hedekin. McCown back in the net. No score, two minutes, ten seconds into the first period. And the Leafs come out slowly. Pretty good forechecking by this Vancouver team. The Leafs unable to get going against them. This is an offside play to Craven. Scovaderas making his first start in the playoffs. I'm sure Pat Burns wanted to add a little speed to the lineup. He got it right here, tries to go between the legs of McLean and is thwarted on the Leafs' best and only chance early in this game. Vancouver looking for its first shot of this first period. They bring the puck over the line, and here it comes now, maybe. Boy, right on! Stopped by Puntman. Out the center. Cleared into the zone by Bird. Babbage slipped and fell down, and one knee got back up, though, in time to check Osborne. Linden takes over in his own zone and comes around the net up for Burry. Burry flipped it through center ice in behind Adams. He circled back to pick it up, and then he just shot it in, and they're making changes again. The Leafs come out, running in for checking. With Adams, here's Burry intercepting, and Adams to Burry, and then running, and he fanned on it, and Burry was right behind him. Murray remaining on. Now he's heading off to the Vancouver bench. A rather long shift. Linden had gone ahead of him. Adams is also off, and Momesso comes in. Momesso overskates the puck in the lead zone. Comes back to him. He gets a good shot away, and Puffan stopped that. Brown to the other side, and Hedekin will dump it in again. In back of the net, Puffan coming out to stop it. Thrown up on the boards for Gilmore, and he's out with Clark. Gilmore coming in with Clark on his right. Gilmore dropped it to Clark. Low shot, and the clean, a nice stick save. Three Canucks pick it up and skate out, led by Ronning. He's across center to the leaf line. Ronning left it for Momesso. He has to go to the corner, and the Leafs intercept and come back out. This is Gardner coming through center and across the line. And on a sharp angle, so around the net he goes. Now in front with the shot. And he just lifted that up into Kirk McLean, who seems to have all the angles all the time. And the faceoff is to the right of Kirk McLean. No score, first period. Coming up to the five minute mark, and Ellip hands it off to Gill, who shoots it. That's blocked. Cardinal nearly had a breakaway. Craven following up on the play, brings it in. Craven shot it up the net. In back of the goal is the defenseman. Lume out pass. Puffman was down, and the Canucks came mighty close right there. Puck is knifed away to center. And Chuck moving up, driving the shot. A clean, a good save. Kicked out the right pad to stop that decent shot from Andrew Chuck. McLean out of the net. Bumped lightly back there by Eastwood. Fired back to the net again. Clean, made sure the puck was down flat. And then the Canucks get it out. Ojek played it up the center. Lafayette couldn't carry on. Shot back in across the Vancouver line and Lume. Starting out. Glenn is the other defenseman for Vancouver. And he'll take the pass. Shot it away. And down the ice it goes. No score in this first period. Five and a half minutes into it. Off the boards, it shot the center. Babich waits. Now McIntyre is back on side. And the Leafs Berg. Bumped by Dinnick, but they get out to center. Zazel is skating in hard. He left it for Osborne along the boards going in. Osborne is tied up. Good play by Babich to clear it out. Miranov going rink wide, and back in is Rouse. Lifted one into the corner. Berg is in first. 
Sidestepping ahead. Gilmore overskating the pass. And out goes Adams. He's down across the leaf line. Adams trying to go in. He's tied up, and Puffin reached out to knock it into the corner. Burray went over there after it. Gilmore tied him up. Held it with a skate. Play is allowed to continue. Now it is centered. And the Leafs get it out. Played through center. It is Gartner's high rising shot. Loved by McLean. And McLean will hold it. We played 6-24 of the opening period. On this Victoria Day weekend, the fireworks have started early. Gartner tries a wraparound. He has shown more speed tonight than he did in any of the first three games. He's been pointless in this series. Nearly scores here. And at the other end, Yurke Lume tried the same offensive move to wrap around and nearly got the first goal of the game on Felix Putnam. From the faceoff, Vancouver winning the draw. Linden took it away from Gilmore. And Adams skates out over the line. He sees Linden knocking it down and coming in as Burry on the right side. Slapped it into the corner. There was McCown, and he's away for Toronto. McCown on a rush. He's to center, and then put it in there for Clark, but off his stick. Lane out of the net, dumped it into the corner. Gilmore in, checking Adams. The two of them fight for it, and Clark comes in and knock it loose. Now Adams got a stick on it, got it as far as the line, and Gilmore left it there. Here is Gartner. Not given much room. He's knocked down by Hennigan. And now Gilmore picks it up to Clark behind the net. He can't center it. He's tied up back there. It comes through the crease, and in goes McCown, pinching in deep, and Burry gets it out. Up is Linden to center with Adams and Brown. It's dropped back, and the long shot got by Puckman, but missed the net. And the Leafs get back out. Burry was hanging back there and broke it up. Again, they're changing quickly as Clark comes in with a high shot. That's knocked down by McLean, and it's steered out to center ice. Ellen and Gill. Ellen comes out. Pass, missing Manderville. Lume for Vancouver. Up through center, and Ronning failed to hang on to that pass. Again, Lomasso forechecking. It is Gill turning away. He saw Jelena come in. So he skated along the line before giving it to Manderville. I think he missed it. The goaltender had to play it. So no icing and up for the Canucks. Ronnie through center is Lume. Lume brings it up over the line, leaves it for Ronnie. Ronnie hanging on to it, passed it back. And Jelena couldn't get a shot. Mameso, he's rubbed out by Gill on the board. The Leafs can't clear it. It is Mameso again. The heat is on now. Vancouver looking for the first goal of the game. It is shot from the boards in the corner. Up along the line and back in it goes. Mameso, he tried to center it. Around the net, Jelena out front with the pass. Big scramble in front. Dittick fired it back for Ronning. Center that. Mameso, another great chance. And the Leafs just hang on. The shot in close, Puff Van down. Back of the net, out front it comes. And finally, it's shot on the boards and down the ice. What great pressure by Vancouver. So we're near the halfway mark of the first period. No score in this game. That's an icing call against the Canucks. They had that puck inside that blue line. It seemed like an eternity. And they had some great scoring chances, but came up empty. Well, the Leafs have won all year on defense, and in the last four games on the road, that's disappeared. As you can see, 17 goals against. They were under siege by some brilliant floor checking and offensive zone puck control by this running line. The Leafs got the puck four or five times and could not get it out. Twice the Vancouver defenseman kept it in, and although Felix Potvin did not have to come up, with any brilliant stops, you can bet that the reps were being held on the Leaf bench at least 20 seconds where they tormented the Leafs badly in their own zone. Oh, Pop Van's head was spinning on that last rush by Vancouver. The Leafs have outshot Vancouver 7-3 so far in the first period. 
they haven't had the uh, coverage that the Canucks enjoyed there moments ago. Lomeso especially. And Ronning, they were in close several times. Jelena had a chance. But it's still scoreless in the first period. Eastwood pinned in on the boards by Brown. Puck loose back of the net. And Rachuk got it out front. It came to the blue line. Miranov shot missed. And the Canucks dump it out to center ice. Slammed back in by Rouse. Edikin is the first one back to pick it up. He made a good move along the boards. Now coming out, Lafayette gets up over the line with a long shot, and it too was wide of the net. Lafayette tried to pick it up, and he did. Shot it ahead. The Canucks are in there, forcing the play again. Now it's intercepted by Andrachuk. Down goes Miranov. Gets it over the line. Puck loose in front of the net. And McLean tapped on it and got to the corner. Osborne had his man tied up. Portnall, they push and shove each other. Perry Fraser has allowed them to go at it so far in this first period. 9.35 remaining in the opening period. No score. And Vancouver starting deep in their own zone. Portnall looking for some skating room. Comes up over the leaf line and trying to split the defense. And the fade went flying as Portnall kept going. And the puck is in the crowd at the far side. With 9.20 remaining in the first period. Shuff finished the game three. The only sign of any animosity tonight occurs right here between Cortnell and Osborne. Both appealing to referee Fraser for a penalty. This has been a fast skating, non-physical game so far. Sylvain Lefebvre leaving the puck for Gilmore right in front of his own net to McCown by Bure and all the way down the ice. This will be an icing call. And there it is. It's the Canucks get back to it. If you can. Boy, he's sharp. Here's Gilmore, ready to take this face off against Lafayette. No McIntyre, and cleared it away. McIntyre is coming back near center. Pass went by him. Off a stick. Into the... 8.50 left in the opening period. Lume shooting one high, and it gets back there where Gill is being watched by Ojik. Ojik was checked, and Gill was allowed to skate the center. Now to Clark. Moving up with a shot right on. McLean to save. Gilmore went in. Clark on the other side fell. And it slapped to the line where Gill knocked it down and fired a shot in there in front of the net. The Canucks are going to clear it out to the line, but they didn't get very far in that first attempt. Hooked away, though, by Gartner and out the center. Gartner to Rouse. He dumps one in. Lume calmly knocked it down and fed it off the boards down the ice. And they have waved off icing on that one. With 8.05 left of the period, Linden almost stopped Gill as he skated out of the zone. Gill looked up and saw Bure, so he got rid of it quickly, and down the ice it goes, and McLean had to make the play. Zezel on it, centered it. Linden was in front of his own net to scoop it away, and Bure delivered a pass on an open wing. Adams just turned and took a swing at it and missed it. Again, McLean away out of the net. He saw Bure ahead of him and played it up to him. Now Linden scooped it to center, and here's Adams dumping it in. On the play is Babbage, the defenseman in deep, centered it, scooped away by Putman in front of the net where Burray was coming in. Linden feeding it back of the net for Adams. Adams is tied up by McCown, who comes away for Toronto. McCown skating to center ice and going over the Vancouver line, gets a shot but claimed the save on the short side. Adams after it, couldn't clear it away from Eastwood. Eastwood centered it. The Leafs fed at it. In close, Berg is upended. And the Canucks fail to get it out. There's Berg again, can't center it. Covered on the play by Hedekin. Ellen, back in. Shooting it to the far corner. Govaderis racing in, bumping his man. Govaderis centered it. Went by everybody, right to Craven, and he got it out. Cardinal down across center and had to back off against Ellen. We'll try it again. Cardinal, good skating coming in. Had it poke checked by Andrew Chuck. Lume fired it in there. Andrew Chuck lost his stick on the check. 
And the puck is stopped by Lume and drive high. Glove by Putman. He'll hold it. Just stick. Marinol flipped the puck back to the net for Ellett. Out to Andrachuk. Rink wide the pass. Skipped away from Govadaris. And Glenn comes back for Vancouver. Glenn left it there. Govadaris knocked him down as he skated by him. And the Canucks Lume, a pass ahead. Missed by Lafayette all the way down the ice and Popin stopping it for Elk. Six minutes left in the opening period. No score. Gilmore coming out. Across center is Gilmore. Up over the line. Big through. Tried to set it up. Pushed it over in front of the goal. And the Canucks go back to pick it up. It's Courtney skating a lot this first period. Coming in. Courtney stop it. Here's Craven. Couldn't get a shot. He got it through there to Courtney. Craven again. Couldn't keep it in. Diddick from center ice shoots it in. Clark skating on him. Puck up along the boards. Rolled right out in front of the net. Potfai has to make a save now. Knocked down in front. And cleared down the ice of McLean is coming out of the net. Clark was up there for Toronto. McLean left it on the boards. Very confidently. And it's Adams coming in. That's broken up. Gilmore missed the pass. All the way down the ice this time for Babich, and that is an icing call against Toronto with exactly five minutes left in the first period. And the Hockey Night in Canada crew bringing you this game coast to coast. It's game four. The Canucks lead the series two games to one. 4.50 remaining in the opening period. No score in this one. The Leafs try to even it up. Game five also slated for this building. Here's Pearson. All the way back to the line. The pass to the far side. Long shot. McLean the save. Off the Rouse shot. Rouse stops it again. Shoots it in there. Gilmore centered it. Pearson is tied up. Still fights for it though. Gilmore there with him. And Hedekin won that battle and got it out. Ronning skating in. Three of them line up to come in. Lamesso in the Ronning. Centered and Jelena covered. Up and knifed it away. It's off the boards and back to Hedekin. Shot. Green shot is blocked in front of the net. Gilmore coming back out, racing away from Hedekin. And here he comes, right in with the pass. And it was a falling Pearson who tried to tip it in. But he went wide of the net with it. Four minutes left in the opening period. No score. Long pass hitting Govadaris. He's skating in hard again. Govadaris breaking for the net. Goes around the goal to center it. And the Canucks pick it up. Lume made the fine defensive play to get it out. Craven comes in looking for it. Lume has to wait now. Played it up to the line. Craven got out in a hurry. So they were on side. And Chuck sidestepping ahead. Lume bringing it back in there, but they're offside this time. Portnell called on the offside. We'll be back after the Four quality chances. Here's maybe as good a one as they've had. Pearson tries to take the Gilmore pass, but gets knocked down. Gets a stick on it, but not enough. McLean has had to stop a lot of long shots, Bob. No screen shots and no second shots. Total of 10 by Toronto, five by Vancouver. No score. They're offside again. The pass just out over the line, and Craven knew it. Comes up when the other team scores first in the playoffs. They're one and 10. Amazing. Isn't it funny? They end one game and everybody was at everybody else, and then they start the next game and it's quiet. No hitting. Vancouver on the attack here. A pass by Glenn right in front of the net. Here's a chance running, and he can't drive it in. It's still loose, though. They whack away at it, and running had a couple of chances. Glenn failed to stop it with a skate. And center Lume dumping it back in. Vancouver. Come right at pot fan like we felt they would. They had two or three players right in front of them, but nobody could get their stick on the puck and jam it in. That is Eastwood trying to work it up over the line. He got in deep, took a hit from Diddick. Govadaris and Andrew Chuck went in there. Govadaris upended, reaching for it. He won't reach it. Eastwood on the boards. Jelena couldn't clear it out. Kept in by Lefebvre. Bumped by Mavesso, who went flying. And here's Diddick again for Vancouver. This time he wasted little time in shooting at the center ice. Town nearly lost it to Mameso. Drilled a shot at McLean. And the 
the goalie just dropped it down and backhanded the puck back to the, his own net. No score. Two minutes left in the first period. Cowan drops it back to Lafayette. He gets up and wrapped it on the boards. It got over the line. Well, once again, Brown brings it back up. Shot it from center ice, and Popvale will stop it back to the net. Lafayette hounded by Linden, who hit him. Leafs get it out. Zessel comes up with Bird. The pass in there for McCown. The defenseman in too far. To get a shot. And the Canucks rip it ahead. Linden was hit, though, by Osborne and couldn't carry on. 120 left in the opening period. There's no Brown from the blue line to Hedekin. He had to kick it away and then was checked by Gartner. Rouse trying to stop Trevor Linden. Not an easy chore. And here's Burre in his center. The Leafs get it out. Clark trying to get away. Burre caught him and slowed him up. And the puck is chopped over the glass into the crowd. One minute. And one second remaining in the first period. Face off just inside the Vancouver line. Linden stays on. He's there with Adams and Bure. Toronto has Gilmore. Clark and Gartner. Gilmore not happy the way things are about to happen, but he won the draw. Clark from the blue line flipped it back to the net. It came out front again, taking a funny hop off the boards. McLean stopped it. We're in the final minute of the first period. As Lefebvre comes back and gives it to McCown. Rink wide is Gilmore coming in. Gilmore forced to stop along the boards in for Gardner. McLean beat him. Shot away and out to center ice again. That hopped away from Lefebvre. He has to go back with 30 seconds left in the period. Vancouver making another last minute change. Craven in there for checking. And Lume from his own line saw him up there. It was knifed in right on the net. The count around the goal, pulling away. Pass to Gartner. Gartner to Clark. Clark given very little room along the boards, and Babbage stayed with him. Gartner kept coming. Gilmore is over there. It's not back of the net where Babbage will take it. And he'll take it out of harm's way by shooting it to center ice. And the horn goes as Craven picked it up to end the first period of the shots by Toronto 11 and by Vancouver 7. Well, a very well-played first period. Good chances for both teams. And anyone who thought it was going to be World War III must the be a little disappointed. Well, a reminder coming up on our first intermission. Don Cherry is with us again in the coach's corner. And here in game four at the Pacific Coliseum in Vancouver, the score after one period. Vancouver nothing, Toronto nothing. In beautiful Vancouver, sellout crowd again, of course, here in the playoffs. And this city is certainly caught up in all the excitement of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Here's the second period, no score in the game. Lefebvre dumping it in for Toronto, and Lume will take it off the boards and hook it back of his own net. Adams waits for the pass and takes it up the line, but couldn't handle it cleanly. Then he steals it from Gilmore. Ian Linden come in with Burry. It is shot back of the leaf net. Gilmore hammered it, not out. Here's Linden getting a shot. That was tipped by Adams and up over the net. Gilmore has to go back for the goal. He is stopped. Adams all over him. Still fights for it. Burry comes in, trying to steal it. It is still Adams and Gilmore. The two of them fall. And the Leafs, Sylvain Lefebvre comes out. He is skating to center and backhanding the puck in on the net. McLean steering it aside. Comes off the boards. Burry is starting to move, but he's caught by Gilmore before he could get up to the puck. Gilmore lost the helmet on that chip. Gartner turning across center. He's over the line. And it poked away. Ellett didn't see it. Burry did. He's coming in on Ellett. And Ellett knocked it off his stick. Hedekin shot it back in. Minute 15 into the second period. Todd Gell waiting for Govaderis to come back and circle with Eastwood. That is Momesso, 27, standing right in front of the net. Forcing Gill to make his move. It is shot down the ice. Bovideris is in. 
forcing the goaltender McLean to play it. Overdares with a great burst of speed to go in there, and McLean had no choice. He had to play it. It would have been icing. The Leafs fight for it off the boards. Govadares is stopped there by Brown. It comes out in front, and three Canucks hop on it and get away. Down to center is Jelenine coming in from the left wing. He's stopped by Gill, who played the body and kept him back there. Messel fired one in front of the net, and Gill was there watching Jelenine. This is the first penalty of the game, and it's against Jelena. He and Gill were bumping a little bit, and then Jelena took off and hit Gill in on the boards. The first penalty of the hockey game goes to Martin Jelena. Here's the high stick. They call it high sticking. It probably was more of an elbow on Todd Gill. Gary Fraser hasn't had to blow his whistle very often in this game, but he does here early in the second period. The Leafs get a power play. 2-10 the time of the penalty here in the second. So no score in the game. And the Canucks will send the Leafs back deep. This is Miranov with Ellett, the other defenseman. Clark, Gilmore, and Rachuk, the forward line, and they're coming at the Canucks now to center. Ellett rifles it in. Clark will take it on a skate and lose it. Marinoff can't stop it at the blue line. The penalty killers. Hunter, he's number 19 going in there. McIntyre, the other forward. Babich and Diddick are the defensemen for Vancouver. Dave Ellen out against Hunter. Shot it over the line, and Babich couldn't clear it out of the zone. McLean stops it going the other way. McIntyre has a chance to clear it down the ice, and a high one does get over the glass into the crowd. And the face-off will have to be inside the Vancouver line. Well, after a slow start at the penalty killing in these 94 playoffs, Vancouver here at home have really become quite proficient at it, allowing only four power play goals against in the last 37 chances. They were perfect in game three, four for four. And when you can get that stat going in your favor, it can save you all kinds of worry, as Pat Quinn, I'm sure, would be the first to say. And here the Leafs get a chance to get that almighty, it's almost religious, first goal of these playoffs. 113 left in the penalty to Martin Jelena. They saw just inside the Vancouver line. Craven for Vancouver against Gilmore. Craven won it cleanly for Lume. He wakes and then shoots it the length of the ice. Ellen back. One minute left to the penalty. Leafs taking their time on this power play. No score. Second period. Long shot in by Andrew Chuck. Gartner is the first one on it. Ian Gilmore back at the net and Lume doing fine work for Vancouver. Shot it by Ellen who tried to stop it with his glove. He fell. The Canucks have it again. Here's Burray and he's coming in. Burray shoots. That's stopped by Putvan. Murray got the rebound. Marinov now takes over with 30 seconds left in the penalty. And it's Marinov straight up to center ice. Getting the Vancouver zone and handing it off to Gardner and hopped away from him. Gardner again lost it. And Lume near center ice trying to give it to Burray. Didn't see a move in. Ten seconds left in the penalty. And the Canucks have killed it off as the Leafs come out to center. Gilmore coming over the line with Clark getting a shot. The high shot blocked by McLean. Clark fell to the ice. Here's Gill. The penalty is over. And here's Clark again. Another shot high off the blocker of McLean. The Canucks now fired up. It is Hunter's long drive. That hit the stick of putt fan. In back of the net into the corner is Hunter trying to dig it out. He does. Hunter given a light bump by Gilmore. Gilmore knocked it loose for Gill, back of his own goal for Toronto. Goes the other way, and Gilmore right in front of the net. Out against Lafayette to center. In on the line. That is Colbert's getting knocked down by the two defensemen, Brown and Hedekin. He is back up and on the puck. Getting it back to Gill, and the shot is blocked by McLean. Clark in for checking Hedekin. He's hauled down. The pass in front. Stopped by Lafayette. Can't get it out, though. The Canucks finally pick it up and bring it out. It is Adams shooting it in from center. And there's Potvin raising it high on the glass. 
The Leafs get it up along the boards and finally out where Clark takes it. Lost it and escapes. And Adams backhands it in again. The Canucks trying to press. Lindon hold down. And there will be a penalty to the Maple Leafs. Trevor Lindon going around the net was hauled down by Sylvain Lefebvre. And now the Canucks will have their first power play. No score in the second period. And now the Leafs are shorthanded. Lefebvre trying to run a little interference on Lindon to allow Todd Gill to get around the net. Lindon went down, and he'll serve two or less minutes as the Vancouver Canucks, five for 14 of the series, have their first power play of this evening. And it's Lindon with Adams, Bure, Lume, and Brown. Koshaliski on with Osborne. Face off won by Vancouver, but it was cleared out by Toronto. Osborne got a shot that McLean had little difficulty with. Osborne trying to keep it in there now. Working it on the boards against Linden, hoping to get a face off in that zone, but the referee allows the play to continue, and it's Lume coming out with Bure. He's up to center ice and rifles it in. Comes off the two corners and all the way down the ice. Almost got the four corners. And it hit that third down there and stopped by McLean. He toughened this square rink to get it all the way around on one shooting. Nearly did that time. Adams coming in with Trevor Linden on the move on the left side. Adams takes it back to the net. Out front it comes and Berg will get a chance to move it out. He does. And Zezel has McLean leaving the net again. As he went in to pick it up, he centered it. And Berg couldn't handle it. There's Zezel back to the goal. Zezel helping to kill this penalty on the attack now. He's out front. Zezel trying to come in front. Berg didn't see the loose puck. And four Canucks line up to come out. Burry takes it over the leaf line, and he was hammered on the boards. The count is back there for Toronto, and he was hit hard by Adams. Again, Krushelinski trying to move it out. Two on one, Toronto. Krushelinski coming in. Shoots. And he missed it and rebound. And that was fired wide of the goal. The Canucks come back in. Murray over the line, dropping it. Shot. Great save by Putt Van. That glove save. With only 16 seconds left in the penalty now to Sylvain Lefebvre. Toronto has had two glorious scoring chances. And then the Canucks stopped by Putt Van. Well, Yerke Lume pinches here and doesn't get the man or the puck. Away the Leafs go on a two-on-one. Crucial nist, he's got the puck on the inside. I think he makes the right play in shooting, but missed the net. And right after that, a shot wired by Brown, and Hotman makes a great stop, reaching behind him to nearly pull it under the net on a bullet shot by Jeff Brown. All right, 16 seconds remaining in that penalty to Lafay. The face-off is deep in the Toronto zone, and Diddy gets a screenshot off the glove of Putt Van. Babbage dumping it in back of the net. Mimeso was in there with him. Alec knocked his man down, running. And Gilmore brings it out of the zone. Long pass intercepted. Mimeso takes it, dumped it back. The lead penalty has been served. No score in this hockey game. We are nearing the eight-minute mark of the second period. There have been some great chances here in the second. So far, Clark all the way back with Rouse. Ahead to Clark, a little bit too far for him. He's covered by Babbage, allowing Dinnick to pick it up, and that is an icing call against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Well, when the Clark part of the big line for the Leafs with Gilmore and Gardner. Craven, McIntyre, and Hunter left to right for Vancouver. Gardner, Gilmore, and Clark, the Maple Leaf line. Babbage and Diddick are parked at the blue line, and one of them had a notion to step up, but he saw Gartner coming out. And Gartner shot it from center ice to Clark. Clark off the boards, trying to sweep it in front. Gartner is the first one on it. Shot it back at the net for Gilmore and Clark. And Gilmore got out front and lost it. However, at the line, Ellick stopped it. And then Hunter took it away from him, lost his stick, but booted the puck to center. Rouse coming out for Toronto. Lead pass went by Clark down the ice and did it again. 
Shot it along the boards for Craven out front. A quick shot is blocked by Hunter. Ian Gardner chased it. And Hunter got it out. Rouse for Toronto in his own zone. Up to Gilmore. He has to go back with it with McIntyre checking him. McIntyre stopped that pass by Ellen. And Craven set it up. Hunter on a sharp angle. And the net in behind Putman was knocked loose by the defenseman, Glenn. Well, Vancouver get a great chance here after a turnover about 15 feet inside the leaf blue line. Hunter walks in and then throws it back to Brian Glenn, who can't feel the pass. And then Glenn slides into the net, knocking it off its moorings. So the faceoff will come outside. Here comes Glenn, there goes the net. And they line up for the faceoff outside the blue line. Glenn, the defenseman, in deep on that rush. And the Canucks causing some concern on that rush for Felix Potvin. But no score in the hockey game during the nine-minute mark now in the second period. Glenn moving up again. Shot it off the boards. It goes in there, and Lefebvre takes it. He did not see Ronnie. Ronnie skipped away and got it back to Lume, but he missed it. Lume got back very quickly, though. Hit Manning the puck for Lomasso. He's checked at the blue line and sent flying. And the Leafs back to line up. Eastwood dropping it behind the net. McCown going the other way. Vancouver, two four checkers in deep. You play it that way when you were coaching. <laughs> as long as that third guy gets to go down the drain, it's a nice idea. Mr. Imlach knew a little bit about these playoff games, did he not? Prove that. More than once. 10.40 left in the second period here in Vancouver. Canucks trying to go up 3-1 in the series. And the Leafs, of course, trying to tie it up. Fifth game is here. If a sixth and seventh are necessary back in Toronto. Cortnell faking the shot. And didn't get any room from Rouse. He goes to the ice and gets back up. Lafayette knocked his man into the boards. And the puck is over the glass. Canucks nothing. The Leafs nothing. Shots are 16-11 in favor of Toronto. Five to four in this period. In the Leafs' favor. From the faceoff in the Leafs zone, moving up is Hedekin. Hedekin stopped. He got it back again, trying to come out against Berg. It got in front of the net. A weak backhander hit Marinov, and he's skating away with it. Marinov to center, leading three Leafs. Centered one, and McLean chopped it away. Back to the net. Portnell kicked at it. Craven fanned it. Portnell picked it up again and lost it at center ice. Lost his stick to boot. Marinov allowed to come back in his own zone. He's bumped. Now gets away, trying to stick handle out. He got by three Canucks. And got to center and over the line is Pearson getting a shot away. It's gloved by McLean. And he held it. Well, they're parked here in round three in a game up on the Toronto Maple Leafs in the best of seven. Getting the lead on that 4 nothing shutout two nights ago. So the face off to the left of Kirk McLean. The goalies so far unbeatable in this one. 9.30 left in the second period. Broding is coming up on the play as Jelena shot it in. Lomeso on the other wing in there, and he was grabbed by Andrew Chuck, slowed him up a bit. Allowing Govaderas to come out, and he can motor down that right side. Govaderas gets in with the pass, and it's knifed away again and over the glass in the Vancouver zone, and that's where the faceoff will be. Well, Pat Burns often makes game of the year in the National. He had the first shot on goal in this game. Getting a break on McLean early in the first period. We are scoreless here in the second. 9-11 left in the second period. Lafave, screen shot, it hit a leg in front of the net. Osborne, the bird, his shot is blocked by McLean, who is seeing everything. And the face off to his left, kick back. Osborne allowed it to roll to Lafave, and he's in sharp angle, centered it. McLean covering on the post, 
Adams getting it away from the danger area to Burray. He slowed up, waiting for people to catch up. And now it's shot into the lead zone. Lefebvre back to the net. Pass going astray. Miss Berg down the ice. And that's an icing call against Toronto with 8.36 left. Teams played this season, playoffs, and regular season. From the faceoff, it comes to the line where Lume skates around Clark. Centered the puck. It comes back to him. Lume handling it beautifully. Now centers it again. And Adam shot missed by a foot on the far side. Linden keeping it in. The Leafs can't find it. It's in the corner where Burry went after it. Back to Glynn. He gets a shot. That was deflected and it just missed on the short side. The Leafs dump it out. And a break coming in. Here's Gardner. And he missed the net. Gardner ending up through the goaltender and the net. And set up on that clear break. But still, it's scoreless. Well, as often happens, especially in tight games, a great chance at one end is followed quickly by a nice chance at the other. Here's a tip-in chance that nearly handcuffed Potman. The Vancouver Canuck defenseman pinch every once in a while. Gardner never really did get his shot away. Bob Gardner hasn't got a point this series. And he gets in alone, hauled down on the rush, slides into McLean. The net comes off. Neither the shooter, nor the stopper, nor the net is hurt. 8.02 left in the second period. Another big scoring chance. First for the Canucks, then for the Leafs. A great difference in styles of the defense core in each team. Toronto defensemen rarely pinch to keep the forecheck alive. Don't join the rush nearly as much as the Vancouver Canuck defense do, who join the rush and pinch regularly. The puck is shot in, running. Back hands it away, and here's Lomeso through center ice. Think the shot, and that'll do it every time. The speedy winger, Jelena, was moving, and he was fake. 7.45 left in the second period. Canucks bring it in offside. Like Coffee and Norton. Boy, he can fly. And that's a compliment, isn't it? It sure is. Brett Hedekin, number three. Dave Ellip, number four. Gets it up to the line, and Govadere has had some difficulty with it. Running, trying to backhand it in. The Leafs pick it up, shoot it away. He's with his fire center, and Jelena caught him. He got rid of it, though. It's across the Vancouver line, and now Momesso. Up to center and stop, but running is on it. He lost it. Rolled ahead of him. And the Leafs shoot it out again. Brown back with Hedekin. Twisting and turning away from Govadaris. It got up to center ice. The Canucks hop on it. Running and Jelena. Jelena trying to get in there. He was turned around by Andrew Chuck. Here comes Ronning to pick it up. Ronning trying to give it back to Jelena in the corner. Close quarters. Not much room in there. And Govadaris gets out. But he's caught by Jelena. And the two of them hit the ice. Right wide pass by Babich across the two lines. And Momesso doesn't think so. Look at him. Well, he's complaining that a Leaf player touched it and put him offside, but it's a fruitless argument. Pat DeFuso says no, it was from behind the Vancouver line. And no one touched it. The right. guys down in the truck, you can't touch them tonight either. They're going to show you, in fact, a Toronto player did touch it. And the faceoff will be at center ice, as the linesmen admit they made an error. And that's why they drop it at center. There is no score in the game. We haven't missed one. Canucks nothing, the Leafs nothing. 6.40 left in the second period. Babbage moves up to center. Open man as Cordnell coming in off the wing. Gets in close and Pape hugging the post. Got a skate there and then put the stick down on it and held it. So the next face-off will be to Hisler. And from the face-off, the puck going behind the leaf net. Toronto lining up with it. That's Gilmore leaving it for Miranov. Canucks are in deep for checking again. Babich back to his net now. To Courtnall. Canucks move out. First pass was intercepted. The second one on the money. And Divock's long shot rising high. 
above the leaf net. Gilmore around the goal, coming out. He's met immediately by Lafayette. But it's Pearson getting across center. Gilmore catching up to him. The shot in on the net is steered away by McLean, and the Canucks go back. They get it out as far as center ice, and Lafayette was there. Took a hit from Craven as he tried to fire it back in. Now Manderville shoots it in against Babbage. 5-20 remaining. Second period. No score. Linden missing the long pass. And it's cleared back out over the line. Linden going after it with Cortnell again. But it'll be McCown bringing it to center. Linden hit him. Rather stiff check. Here's Burry. Linden coming in with him. Burry a stop. It hopped out over the line and Glim, the defenseman, was coming up on the play. He brought it in. You remember we had the feature on the Canucks number one fan, Andrew Castell. We saw all the paraphernalia, Canucks souvenirs that he's kept over the years. He and I sat through some bad games here every once in a while, Bob. A lot of people did. <laughs> but it's looking pretty good now here in Vancouver. This team knocking off Calgary, Dallas, and the Leafs down two games to one. And looking to go to the Stanley Cup final. Toronto, of course, will have other ideas. They'd like to tie the series tonight. Pass comes in front of the net. Berg had it hop over his stick. Canucks don't get it out. McCown's shot will get out. Away up high. It was deflected in front of the goal. Berg and Linden had collided. 31 to go here in this 0 0 game in the second period. Gilmore, Gartner, Clark. And they win the draw. Edikin and Brown are the Vancouver defensemen, and Ronning is up front with Momesso. And here comes Ronning, Jelena, the other forward, and they're all rushing in. It is Clark getting back in front of Momesso. Then he overskates the puck, but Gill takes it back of his own net. Todd Gill coming out in front of his own goal was knocked down, and Gilmore picks it up. He circles back with Ronning for checking. Gill again. The Canucks, good for checking. Jelena in there. And they pick it up in center ice and rifle it back in. Todd Gill, for the third time, will try it. This time he skates out in front of Potvin, looking both ways, and he gets it up to Clark. Clark over the line, trying to go in there, trying to fool Brown, but he didn't go for anything. Clark takes it again and leaves it in the corner. Here's Gartner. Nobody open in front, so he tried to hang on to it. And it was hooked high into the crowd again by Cliff Ronning. Three minutes and 32 seconds away from the end of the second period. The Vancouver Canucks and the Toronto Maple Leafs are scoreless. The shots are 18-11 in favor of Toronto. Here's another shot. This one deflected. Diddick and Andrichuk had something going. Andrichuk slapped at it. The puck flew up and hit Linden. And he's been hurt. He stays on. Now I think he's going off. It came off a stick and right up into the face of Trevor Linden. And he's going to the bench. McIntyre is in there trying to pick it up, but the play is called as LeFave touched it. And some of the fans are complaining here that it was a high stick, Bob, but if they could see the replay that I think we're going to see, they will see that it was the puck, not the stick. Trevor Linden wanted to continue. Here's the play right here. The puck comes right up off the, his own stick on the attempted shoot-in by the lead player. Linden's on the bench getting some medical attention. Looks like he's going to go in and get stiffed. There's only 3.11 left in this period. I'm sure we'll see him back. And the crowd trying to get these Canucks in the mood for a goal before this period is out. Three minutes and 11 seconds left in it. And Craven comes out with Bure and Adams. Ovideris, Eastwood and Andra Chuck for the Maple Leafs. And the face-off deep in the Vancouver zone to the right of the net. There's the spot. And we're set. No score. Eastwood against Craven. Comes back to the lead defenseman, McCow. He's trying to go in deep. Govadaris dumped it out front and hit the side of the net. The Leafs keep it in. That was Lefebvre coming from the blue line. Andrichuk hooked at it. The Canucks will clear it to Bure. Up to Craven. Craven and Adams go in, and here's Adams coming in with a weak shot. And a 
went wide of the net. And Chuck turns. Lifted one high into center ice. Govadaris is up across center, but it was played by Babich. And he quickly got rid of it. And Chuck turning. Got away from Burre by giving it to Lefebvre, and Lefebvre shoots one in there. 2.30 remaining in the second period. Scoreless game here in Vancouver. And the Canucks get it up again to Adams. He shot it in. Burry trying to stride in there against McCown. McCown there first. It's cleared away, and Manderville just shot it across center ice. Canucks turn right back. Chopped in by Burry. And Bob Rouse for Toronto. High one will go all the way down the ice. It's sick, and coming back is Lume. And he touches it before Manderville could get near it. That's an icing call against Toronto. With 2.04 left in the second period, the shots are 18-11 in favor of the Maple Leafs. This is a scoreless game. Well, the Leafs have done a nice job on Pavel Burry. 20 points in his last 13 games. He's at least one point in each of them. He leads his team in six, or tied for the lead in six different offensive categories. The reason he has been silent tonight is he hasn't had a chance to get the puck and get skating full blast between the blue lines. And you can, if you can take that away from him, you've got a long way of corralling him to some degree. You can see Lennon on the bench, he's back. Vancouver winning the draw. Cortnell left it at the blue line, and Glenn couldn't keep it in. Now they shoot it in. 155 remaining in the second period. Rouse around the net and starting out. It's cleared out across the line, hammered back in. Cortnell couldn't move in on it. Here's Pearson coming in for Toronto. His pass, Manderville shot. The rebound comes out front, and it hit the side of the net. And the Canucks cleared with a minute and a half left in the period. That is Ellen shooting one to center ice. Canucks play it ahead. Checking, getting a little closer now in the dying minutes of the second period. Glenn coming back. Pearson is chasing him. Glenn goes back at the goal. Pearson stayed with him, but the pass was made. And here's Cortnall. He's racing over the lead line. Gets a chance. Throw it in there. The win by McIntyre. McIntyre and Cortnall in there for the Vancouver Canucks. Laid along the boards and out the center. One minute left of the period as it's picked up by Gilmore and Clark with him. Clark's backhander shot right on the side of the net. And McLean made sure it stayed out there. Into center is Cortnell. On the right wing, McIntyre, he centered it. Comes off the board, right to the lead player, Lefebvre. And he played it away. 40 seconds left. Clark getting up over the Vancouver line. And Linden poke checked the puck away from him. And the play goes offside at the Vancouver line. So nearly 100 goalies have had a relatively easy night with reference to the number of shots and the quality of shots. There's Trevor Linden. You can see the cut over his left eye. The problem for him might be as this game wears on. He'll have an ice pack on him when he's on the bench. His Willett's well shot on him. Face off outside the Vancouver line. Linden and Gilmore fight on it. Gilmore stopped by Linden on that face off. Shot from center. Bouncing off the glass, and the goaltenders have to be alert every time the puck is up high. It has taken some funny bounces off the dividers. That one ending up at the side of the net. I'll tell you one thing. I'd be instructing both teams of building, this one included. 20 seconds left in the period. Trevor Linden stopped by Gilmore. Short pass ahead to Clark. Clark nearly turned back to Linden. Adams takes it. And again, at center ice, Brown shoots it in for Vancouver. That will end the second period. Shots 9-4 to four in favor of Toronto. And the score at the end of two periods here in game four. Canucks nothing. And the Leafs nothing. The Pacific Coliseum in Vancouver, the third period of game four. We have no score in this hockey game. Bob Cole and Harry Neal in the booth and ready to go. Is Kerry Fraser at center ice? The Canucks with the Cortnall. Craven line on. At center will be Lafayette, Zessel, Berg, and Osborne starting for the Maple Leafs. 
And here we are, period three. The Leafs control it on that faceoff at center. Ellerton Gill, the two defensemen back for Toronto. Dave Allen, he was caught by the forechecking Craven and shot it away. Lafayette up over the leaf line. It's knocked back into the center ice area, and here is Andrichuk reaching forward, taking a hit from Lafayette, but he shot it into the Vancouver zone. Belvedere is carrying his man in on the boards. Andrichuk mishandling the puck into the corner. Gilmore. Gilmore turning around and getting it back to Ellen. His shot deflected in front of the goal, and the Canucks get it out smartly. Craven taking a look around over his shoulder, seeing nobody come up, so he shot it in. Todd Gill with some open ice to skate. Gets across center, hit by Linden, and it's shot in there for Bird. The goaltender McLean played it away from him. Here's Adams coming back for Vancouver. He tried to fool Lefebvre and then went to the ice. Murray in there trying to get it loose. Murray tries to get by Osborne. He's still on it behind the net. Osborne and Murray, and Murray gets away from him. To Linden. Pressure here by Vancouver. Here's Murray. Shot. He misses. And it comes right into the crease area with Adams dumped behind the net and Potvin sprawling to smother it. On the least defensive zone coverage broke down. And when Burry gets the puck, everyone goes to him. Two leads do, and look where Adams is, all alone. And he whiffs on the rebound that came off the back of the rink. Jeff Cortnall, who's in a little mini slump, no goals in his last six games, comes out before each game in his long underwear and tapes his stick. He doesn't mind the odd visit from some adoring fans. As you can see, these two Canuck fans painted up. Cardinal on the bench. Ronning's line on for Vancouver. Jelena parked to the right. Omeso on the other wing, and he's in there bumping McCown. Lefebvre for Toronto. Poke the puck ahead. The Leafs just dump it away. They are changing. Clark and Eastwood coming off the bench. Babbage around his own net. A long lead pass to center. Momesso was there alone as the Leafs were changing. And Toronto has to get back again. Nearing the two-minute mark of the third. No score in the game. Didick missing it. Icing waved off. And Babbage back in a hurry for running. Running brings it out over the line. Skating away from Clark a second time and down on the wing. Didick. Babbage coming up. Babbage tried to center it. He was hit in the corner. And now Shelena. Shelena working his way along the boards. Good pressure by Vancouver. Shelena upended. There he goes in back of the net. The Canucks are on the puck. Running, trying to get it out front. He does. Lamesso is covered. Chopped away to Clark. He had to stop to pick it up. Lamesso caught him then with a hit. The Canucks break up that leaf rush at their own blue line with Lume taking over and skating in front of his own net. Dropping the pass back. Glynn up to center. He couldn't get by Clark. Clark failed to see Gartner up ahead of him. It is Gill again, turning away from Linden. Out to center. Adams stopped the pass. Shot it back in. Linden was hit trying to chase it. 250 gone in the third. No score in the hockey game. Hard pass to handle for Berg. And Gill will try to move it up now. Shot it across center ice as the Leafs want to change. Kirk McLean plays it when he sees the linesman waving off the icing. Shot to the line and stopped by Osborne. He played it back in and Glenn hammered it to center ice and rolled by Lefebvre back to the blue line. Linden is in there. Lefebvre saw him and got it out to center ice. Bird steals it, takes the shot. McLean was screen on that. And the last second move made the save. Toronto from center again. Puck is rifled in high on the boards. And it's Bird picking it up. Leaving it in the corner. McIntyre has Gilmore tied up. Gilmore gets loose. McIntyre poked at it. It got up along the boards. And Hunter got it out to Adams. Up with Brown. They get as far as the leaf line. And Toronto takes over again. Allen had the pass go behind him. 
Adams scooped it back inside his own blue line at the four minute mark of the third period. Canucks on the move again. McIntyre coming in. A weak shot, missed the net. And Gill has to hurry to chop it down the ice. It'll miss the net. But they waved off the icing. Damage from the goaltender. Immediately shot it away. It'll get right on the net. Pop and the save. Ellett has Manderville to his left. Leaves it back to the net. Now takes it from Gilmore and gives it to Gill. Pass tipped down the ice by Manderville. Once again, McLean. He nearly got caught that time waiting. Finally got it away. And Craven shot it up there for Ronning. Ronning coming in on goal. Oh, what a great chance. Ronning again. It's centered. And Potback came up with a big stop on Craven. Well, the best scoring chance of the hockey game right there. And down the tubes. The Canucks get the best chance either team's had in the third period. A lovely little backhand pass by Ronning on the two-on-one to Jelena. And Jelena can't redirect it by Potvin before he's filled in by Gill. No score nearing the five-minute mark of period number three. And the Canucks have turned it up a notch here in the third period. The second was rather quiet for both teams. The Canucks seem to be going very well here, and it's intercepted at center again and shot in by Jelena. Back of the goal is Rouse for Toronto. Coming out with a lead pass to the line, and it's shot in over the Vancouver blue line, and Babbage cleared the zone. Ronick can't get going this time. Whacked it up there for Jelena. Oh, Jelena coming in. Stopped on the short side by Putman, and the Leafs turn it back. It is fired into the zone by Govadiris. Clean out. Wants to go the other way, but Andrew Chuck was waiting in that corner. Govader is fighting for it. Andrew Chuck coming up and hit escape. And three Canucks come out. Make that four with Lume catching up. Ronnings pass to Jelena. Back in front of Pumpman doing the split kick it away. The Leafs do not clear it. Ronning again. Doing his tricks in the corner, but now Govadares, he slipped as he tried to get going, and then Momesso caught him. But he continues to fight and rolled it up over the line. He's now, however, trying to get off, and it's shot from center by Glenn. Linden kept it in for Burre. In front was Glenn. Pass didn't get to him. Here's Linden, and he just missed with that one-timer. Linden again after the puck, all fired up in this third period. And the Leafs laid back on their heels a bit with that onrushing attack by the Vancouver Canucks. Lume starting it now, getting it up for Adams off his stick. Gilmore against Burry. And now Adams. And now Lume takes it and brings it back in there with Linden. Flipped it off to Burry. He was slow moving up on it. And McCown couldn't get the puck out, but Clark backs it up in his own zone with Linden checking him. The Leafs having a tough time organizing against the four-checking Vancouver Canucks, and they have to ice it. So it'll come back inside the line as we played 6.48 of the, the game progresses. Lafayette against Kuschelniski. Kuschelniski got the draw control, but Brown might get a shot from the line. Glass. Kuschelniski golfed at it. It gets as far as the line and out to Manderville. He's trying to pick up speed going in. Manderville's low shot is blocked by McLean. It's tipped into the far corner, and Kuschelniski is the first one in. Kuschelniski turning. Gave it to Manderville back of the net. He is being checked. Puck is cleared away by Brown. Up to Craven and through center Lafayette. He's going in there for Vancouver and was stopped by the, the defensive work of Dave Ellett. Again, it's rolled down to McLean. Nearing the eight-minute mark of the third. No score here in game four. Interception, but stolen by Cornell. In to fake the shot, Lafayette going for the net, and the pass is intercepted. Govadere has just missed the lead pass from Andrew Chuck. Babbage shot it away. Puck is shut to center ice, and Marinov slams it back in for Toronto. It hit the back of the net as McLean tried to stop it. Jelena poked it up to Ronnie. He backed off from a hit, and the puck loose at center ice. 
And it's Marinov trying to come in. They get in there, but offside, Eastwood and Golodaris nearing the nine minute mark of the third. Both these goalies have been called upon at times to make good saves. Pot Van Heer in the third's made a couple of good ones. McLean had more to do in the second. Who's going to win first? I guess that's the, the question. There's Pavel's four of his many fans here in Vancouver. McCown from the blue line. That's no problem for Kirk McLean. Took it right on the goal stick. And it's played away to Linden. He has to back up, though. It's shot in there deep. Osborne checked Linden. Canucks get the puck to center. There's McCown waiting for it again. And the Leafs just keep dumping it in. Glenn got it as far as the line. Burry is checked. Here's Zesso playing it back, but it came out over the line. The Leafs get back on side, so it's ripped back in again, and Lume around his own net for Vancouver. Lume. Fine puck carrying defenseman, number 21 for the Canucks. Allen missing Osborne. Lume again to Glenn. And now through center. The lead pass to Bure. Bure shot. He just missed with a crowd in front of Putvan. It is Babbage finding Bure. He finds the leaf line and just dumped it in. Toronto covering the play. Shot down the ice, however. That'll be an icing call. It won't now. McLean played it with Gilmore coming in. Babbage starting. His pass hitting Vomesso. Up with Ronning. This has been a good line here in the third for Vancouver. And it's Ronning doing the step work. Centered and Burray has to turn from the boards. Burray at the line. Soft pass ahead for Didick. Leaves do not pick it up. Gilmore had a stick lifted. Now it's shot to the line and Didick stopped it again. Tipped in there. Puckbank kicked it away. Finally the Leafs get it out to center. Didick took that lead pass easily. And turning at center, a lead pass comes into Gilmore. Can't get a shot. Babbage got back and made a good play. Gilmore scooting back to center ice, but it's Jelena chasing Todd Gill back to the net. Gill turning it back there around the net. Jelena, good for checking with Ronning again. And a pass on an open wing. Clark nowhere near it. Once again, Ella is forced to back up. There's Jelena coming in but he took it outside the line with Cortnell trapped inside the blue line and offside is called. What a great asset the ability to recover. David Babbage recovers when it looked like Gilmore's going to walk in alone and took the shot away from him. Nine minutes and 22 seconds left in the third period. This is a scoreless hockey game in Vancouver tonight. Shots are 24 16 in favor of Toronto. Gill is deep in his own zone with Ellis. Eastwood coming back to help. Three Canucks in deep on this four checking. But the Leafs get up to center and in. It is Eastwood throwing it right in the crease area. Edikin took his man Pearson out of the play. Pearson gets the puck in the corner. Throws it back in the net. Eastwood coming out of the pass. And the backhander by Pearson was a weak one. And turned away. Near center. Leafs can't play it. They do. That's a high stick making contact. Trevor Linden back after being hit in the eye. Tonight is his 375th consecutive game counting league and playoff. And he's currently the Iron Man in the National League with 328. Jamie McCown almost coughed it up. But here's Osborne coming in for Toronto. It's tipped in front of the net by Berg and wide. And the Canucks have Beret with Linden out there again, and Adams up on the rush with Glenn. Linden takes it down the boards, drops it to Glenn. Glenn back to Adams. He's caught, but here's Lume in for Beret, and he one time didn't hit the side of the goal. Osborne will skate the puck out of the leave zone. Up to Zazzle. In with Berg. Shoots! And that stopped by McLean. A nice save. Never shot McLean. Stop that. Two big chances by Toronto, thwarted by McLean. Linden and Burray bring it in. Linden shot. That came off Potvin. He couldn't quite get a handle on it, and it bounced harmlessly away. 7.45 remaining in the third. No score in the hockey game. Here is Ronning again. Up there with Diddick. Diddick going in. Potvin the save on Diddick. These 
two goalies are unbeatable. Gilmore to Clark coming in hard. And he's stopped by McLean. Loose puck. It comes out. A scramble for it. McLean ripped it out. It bounces in front of the net. And the Canucks hang on now. And ice the puck. Wow, what chances. They've had a lot of them. McLean was sprawling on the Clark shot, which was a hard one. He stopped it but couldn't quite find it. And Gilmore had a chance. So to Clark. Well, both goalies have been brilliant here in the third period. Wendell Clark, who wired one from the top of the circle. McLean knew it hit him, but he didn't know where it was. Two Leafs have a chance to get a shot at it. Neither one can get it. Here's the shot right here by Bill Berg, and Zezel goes to the net. This game will probably be decided by a team whose player goes to the net without the puck and finds a rebound because these goalies have been superb on those initial shots. Kirk McLean has shut the Leafs down for 128 minutes and some odd seconds. And was marvelous again right there. Vancouver getting the puck is Hunter. Craven was stopped as he got across the Leaf blue line. few minutes left in game three. Well, Hunter rubs Gilmore off right at the bench, right at the Leaf bench. It was not a very bone-jarring body check. But you can see Pearson getting up, giving Hunter an earful. Neither team had a player that retaliated. Fraser was watching. He doesn't want to call a penalty with 6.58 to go. And you have to be bigger than your temper at this point in a game like this, or you're gonna get your team in trouble. Doug Gilmore, a cut on his nose. It has been overtime since the early of the first period. I've had that feeling. One goal will decide it, and there's only 6.58 left in the third period. Well, one goal now would be huge. Under seven minutes left. The way these two goaltenders are standing up tonight, cool and supposedly calm they look that way and collected for sure the Vancouver Canucks nothing Toronto Maple Leafs nothing it is dumped into the leaf zone where Ellett was back to push it on the boards and get it out by Burry who stopped it Burry then lost it to Andrew Chuck and Andrew Chuck has stopped Burry after him Andrew Chuck Put it up over center ice. That pass to Eastwood. And that is off the extra chance. Two steps and he's gone. But that time he couldn't quite knock it away from Andrew Chuck. 626 remaining. Third period. Zazzle lifting one inside the Vancouver line. Rather gently, so no icing. That is Hedigan turning around the net. He has Brown with him. Brown trying to put it back to him. It got to Mameso on the other side. Slow moving up as far as center. It is shot from there right on the net. That will allow Vancouver to change again. Linden hopping over the boards. The Leafs in their own zone. Get it and bring it out. Pass to Gobadares does not work. Marinov knocked it down. Marinov again pulling away from Linden and he'll come to center. He'll carry it up to the Vancouver line. He'll shoot it. And that came off a stick. Right back to Gilmore, who centered it. There in front of the net was Mameso to pick it up and shoot it out. Gardner missed it. Bure in there again. But it's McCown this time getting rid of it. Off the glove down the ice, negating another icing call. 525 remaining in the third. Nobody able to score yet in this hockey game. Linden almost took it away from LaFave. Tapped back by Gartner. He left it for Gilmore. Gilmore pulling away from Linden with a pass, and now McCown up through center and knifed in by Gilmore. Lume got back, and here come the Canucks. It is Linden striding in with Adams. Adams had the pass get away from him. Linden took it on escape. He's carried into the boards by McCown. Linden and Burray. Burray up with it back to the line. Babbage 
Hodges' shot deflected wide, and here's Burry on it quickly. Burry got it up front. Oh, what a save by Putman. Trevor Linden again set up perfectly by Burry and drove it right up the net, and Popeye stopped it. Here's Clark. He's in back of the net. Wendell Clark trying to center. Fighting away a check, a shot, and that came wide. Out for Vancouver and did it through the middle. It is shot in by Burry, and he goes flying. McCown is nailed back there by Giddick, and the Leafs pick it up now. What action now? They've all turned it up a notch. Here's Gartner faking the shot. Gilmore going back in the net. McLean stopped the pass, and it's cleared back to the line. Stopped by Gilmore. He's there against Craven. Gartner pulled away from him, but ran into Giddick. Cardinal now over center, shooting it deep in the lead zone. Turning is Ellett. Ellett's flip pass to center ice, knocked down by Brown. And back in Gill and have to hurry with Cornell after him. He knew that, so he dropped it for Ellett, who couldn't clear it. Ellett lost it, and Gill picked it up again. Fired one ahead, and Rachuk can't get the puck out. Chilena knocked it down. Craven and Cornell go after it. The centering pass is knifed away by Andrew Chuck on the sweep check. 3.24 remaining in the third period here in game four. Almost a must-win situation for the Maple Leafs as the Canucks want to go up three to one. Cornell comes in. He fights off a check and then couldn't hang on to it. Eastwood knocked it away from him and the Leafs are hanging on now and they shoot it down the ice. An icing call against Toronto with three minutes and one second remaining in the third period in a scoreless hockey game. Sport Wayne won tonight 5-3, so they go back to Atlanta 3-2 nights. Face off here to the left of Felix Potvin. The Canucks win the draw. It is shot away back to the net by Kushelniski, however. And then the Leafs dump it down the ice. Coming back is Glenn. Ripped it ahead for running. He made sure the puck cut out, but the Leafs are going to take over. It is Marinov putting it up there. And here's Pearson coming in. He has Kushelniski on the move. A weak shot. And tipped just wide of the net by Pearson. Gilmore is hammered in front of the net and knocked down. He's slow getting outside the line. Lume to Jelena. Here's running. The tricky running with Momesu coming in. Score!
17.35 the time of the goal, running from the Meso and Shelina. And that's been a good line for Vancouver all evening. One to nothing, here the Leafs right in there. And Govadaris has bowled over as he tried to tie it up. Comes out front again, McLean poking at a loose puck. And the Canucks will clear it away. Two leaves trapped deep in the zone. Brown is coming in, dropping it back, and here's Brown again. Around the net, he'll come out front, he's shot. And that whistle just wide, as Hunter had a great chance. One to nothing, Vancouver here in game four. And if they can hang on, they'll take a 3-1 lead in the series. Well, another game scheduled here in 48 hours. A minute and a half left. Pot fan edging out of the net. Gilmore going in after the puck. Takes it off the boards, and there's Gardner over skating it. Pot fan is still in the net with a minute 19 seconds left in the third period. It is 1-0 Vancouver, and the Leafs fighting for their lives now. Gilmore. Pot fan going to the net bench. The net is empty. The Leafs have the extra man on, and the puck is in there. Here's Andrew Chuck shot, deflected wide, 58 seconds left. Linden trying to hold everybody up there on the boards, and he does a good job of that. With a face-off coming inside the Vancouver line to the left of the plane, Felix Potva is on the bench. There's the net in the Toronto end, empty. 53.2 seconds remaining in the third period. I'm sure the Leafs will call a timeout. I think they're also complaining about the fact that the clock went down after the whistle. So they get the timeout so they can get their players that Pat Burns wants out there. The faceoff is in the Vancouver zone. The puck bouncing all over the place. Diddick makes a shot block. It might have been a tough stop for McLean to make. And finally, they held the puck on the far boards. Well, this game has been scoreless till late in this third period because the two goaltenders were so solid. And that reminds us to remind you, right after the game, we'll have the Molson three stars. And you're looking at the uh, two candidates right there in McLean and Potvin. Potvin, however, is on the bench now. Beaten once. And uh, that came at 17.35. Running from Lomeso and Shelena. All right. The Leafs at the bench. Anxious to see what is about to happen. The Leafs on the ice, the six of them are Andrew Chuck, Clark, Gilmore, Gartner, Ellett, Marinov, Vancouver, Bure, Craven on the draw, Linden is out there, Babich, Vancouver trying to clear it, Gilmore stopped it, fired it in front, and it's lifted away, but over the glass into the crowd, and the faceoff is going to be back inside the Vancouver line, 47 seconds remaining. The well, importance Toronto. of a faceoff. We talk about it many times. This is critical. Toronto Maple Leafs have been better, not a lot better, but better on the faceoff than have been the Canucks. Murray Craven takes very few draws during the regular game, but he's out there now. Remember, he played a lot of center ice for Philadelphia and has played some center ice here for Vancouver, but he hasn't been in the center ice position for draws like this very often in this playoff. He's there against Gilmore, and Gilmore won it. Shot in through a crowd. It comes back near the line, in close to the goal, and it's not down the ice. This is going to be an empty net goal by the Rocket. Here, this is over. A speedy Russian Rocket, as they call him. Nobody going to catch him. Into the empty net, and that will do it here in game four. Two nothing, Vancouver. And the Leafs won the draw. Here's the face off. They kick it back to Miranoff who shoots it. And the Leafs end up getting a bit of a chance right here. But the shot jumps over the two Leaf player stick. Nobody on earth or anywhere else they play hockey is going to catch this guy Bure. And he puts it in. 
to make it 2 nothing with 32 seconds to go. And Vancouver have their feet on the throats of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Up three games to one in this series with the fifth game here in Vancouver. And when the Canucks in playoff history went up 3-1, they have won four series and lost none. And the crowd is finally able to stand up and really let her fly. It's exciting, though, to see a hockey player such as Pavel Bure break away. 150 feet or so. And the draw farther and farther away from any blue shirt. Empty net goal at 19-27. Two to nothing, Vancouver. Puck fans back in the net. Ten seconds left in the game. And Vancouver Canucks will take a 3-1 lead on the Toronto Maple Leafs in this Western Conference Final. This is over. The Vancouver Canucks have defeated the Toronto Maple Leafs. Four to nothing in the first game here. Two to nothing in this game tonight. And they have a stranglehold now in the Western Conference Championship with a 3-1 lead in the best of seven series in game five coming up in 48 hours right here at the Pacific Coliseum. Another shout out for Kirk McLean and he looks more solid if you can believe it every game he plays. Well he got good protection from his uh, team defensively only a couple times that they look confused and the Vancouver Canucks have done it with defense. This is game four out of the way, and the Toronto Maple Leafs have scored two even strength goals and only six goals in the series. And as good as they play defensively, you gotta score a few times, especially when you're playing a team whose goaltender is as hot as McLean is right now. Final shots are 29-21 in favor of the Toronto Maple Leafs. The Canucks got two goals here in the third period. Running at 17-35. Burray empty net goal at 19-27. Well, it's a big win for the Canucks. And now the Molson three stars. Molson Canadian and the Molson Cup program provide awards for Vancouver Canucks stars in all Canucks games home and away. Here are tonight's three stars as selected by Hockey Night in Canada. Tonight's third star from the Toronto Maple Leafs number 29 Felix Putman. Tonight's second star from the Vancouver Canucks with his fourth playoff shutout Number one, Kirk McLean. Tonight's first star from your Vancouver Canucks, number seven, Cliff Running. Well, there's no question about it. Cliff Running had himself a whale of a hockey game tonight. He was a good player in that first period where there was no scoring and his team outshot 11 to 7. And then in the second period, same thing, but he was a threat every time his line got on there. Amesso and Jelena on the wings. No scoring again in the second. Aha, but it paid off in the third. 1735. Mameso and Jelena on the play with Mameso tossing it in front to the onrushing Ronnie and he scored what proved to be the winning goal and then with Felix Potvin on the bench the extra attacker on for Toronto it was an empty netter for Burry here's the goal we were talking about look at Mameso Potvin thought he'd shoot and there's Ronnie what a beautiful play go to the net without the puck do it every rush. It'll pay off eventually, but not maybe as dramatically as it did right there. And Cliff Ronning got away from the Leaf back checker. Stick on the ice, took a perfect pass, 
And here's the Canuck bench as Ronning turned away from the net after he steered it in. Kirk McLean now is tied with Richter with four shutouts. And that's not bad work in Stanley Cup play. Well, the goaltending has been terrific throughout. There's no question about that. And again, here tonight at the Pacific Coliseum in Vancouver, Kirk McLean, a solid standout bit of work for the Vancouver Canucks. The Leafs had 29 shots at him, and he stopped them all. Well, the first star of the game is coming in to chat with Ron McLean, and here's Ron now. Thank you, Bob. Cliff, congratulations. Uh, go ahead. How does it feel? Feels good. Uh, you know, it was a big win for a hockey club, and, you know, we still got one uh, more win that we have to win uh, to get to where we've always dreamed of playing. Uh, give me a sense of your lines performance. It's all the fellas upstairs talked about much of the night, but I think as a trio, uh, you were dynamite all night. Well, it's, it's strange because uh, we were doing lots of... Uh... Go ahead. <laughs> Come on in. Anyways, Glenn. it's, uh, <laughs> you know, most of the time, the last... Uh, nine games or so we were just checking the number one center and Madano and then Gilmore and they try to change it up so it was important for us to uh, definitely uh, you know keep going and and maybe add some offense and we were getting chances and uh, you know we had a couple we had a two on one that uh, Marty almost scored but uh, we kept at it as a line and kept working together and I think that's why we scored. You won the uh, super skills competition this year as the Canucks most accurate shooter and it's always been a great dimension in your game in tight <laughs> uh, we're going to show the goal and you can address maybe where it was that you uh, became so proficient at uh, converting and doing those well, little things. I remember Marty gave me a nice, or, or someone on the side gave it to me, made a move, gave it to uh, Serge, and uh, Serge is such a heads-up player, I tried to just go to the net, and uh, we've played together from training camps, and, and uh, we've always seen to play together. He's a big guy, I'm a small guy, but I can use my quickness, and he can use his size, so we work together very well. March 5th, 91, you came over from St. Louis. Did you two play together there much at the Blues? Uh, sometimes, but not often. I was many times just playing the power play, and uh, I played behind players such as Doug Gilmore and Peter Zezel at one time. So I was always playing, uh, you know, with great centermen. So I got to watch some some great ones play. We've often talked about being from Vancouver, how great it is for the Canucks to get on a roll, and whenever you play well. Uh, but you think of that ninth round draft in 1984. Uh, Gary Souter came out of that. Luke Robitaille both won the Calder Cup coming out of that. And uh, we've gone through this before too. Whether you ever thought you'd be. Uh, given a chance like this despite that brilliant career at New West? Well, in junior I did very well, and uh, it's no surprise that I'm um, half the size of a lot of guys out there, but, you know, something I've always dreamed of doing was playing in the NHL, and for a lot of the small players out there, you can play. You just have to just give everything you got and uh, play with as much heart as you can, and there's many times you're going to get knocked down, but the quicker you get up to show them that you can take a hit, uh, I think that's important. And, you know, it helps also playing with guys that are six foot five on your wing, so it yeah. makes it a lot easier. Can't say enough about Messo. And how about this guy over here? Shutout strings now at 135 minutes and 25 <laughs> seconds. Uh, four shutouts in the playoffs, ties a the record. There's Kirk McLean. What about uh, what about the goal? You, you've had Ranford and Reddick in New Westminster, so you've got a good start with guys in the net. But uh, how about Kirk? I've always been fortunate to play with good uh, goalkeepers, and Kirk is the most calmest uh, goalkeeper I've ever seen. Uh, even when he lets one in, it's like it's no big deal. He just look, gets ready for the next one. And the biggest thing with Kirk is uh, when you do make a good defensive play, he lets you know, and uh, he's yelling at you to make sure you're covering guys in front of the net. And he doesn't talk a lot in the dressing room, but when you're out there on the ice, he lets you know where you should be. What about Pat Quinn? Uh, how did he prep you for tonight? Uh, as we discussed, there was all this anticipation of uh, a wild evening based on the last three minutes of game three. Well, we got a hockey club that's pretty tough. People don't realize we've got some guys that uh, can throw their weight around, and we've got some players not playing, such as Antoski and a couple other players. So uh, we're not worried about that. We've got some toughness in our dressing room. we also got experience in a player like Tim Hunter, who's been there before. He's really leading us in the dressing room right now and letting us know what it's going to take to get to the finals. And we're one game away, but it's a lot of work still. We know there's three periods of hockey that we've got to give everyone we got. Well, it was like you sensed you were going to do it tonight, uh, all through the game, as we said. You played great. Uh, congratulations on a huge goal for the Canucks. Thank you very much. Cliff Ronning, we'll send it upstairs and bring in Kirk McLean in a moment here. Fellas? Well, it'll be interesting to hear from Kirk McLean. He's won 10 now uh, in these playoffs, and uh, he's, he's on quite a roll. There's no question about that. But the Vancouver Canucks tonight, Harry, what, what's your impression? Uh, two periods and nearly three periods just laying back. There weren't that many quality chances. But their defensive style seems to have the Leafs outside. Well, the Leafs can't get much forechecking, uh, effective forechecking done against this Vancouver defense core. Uh, they, most of them, if not all of them, handle the puck well. 
four of the six jump into the rush every time and the Leafs can never get their second four checker in even when the first guy gets in early enough to cause some trouble. But Toronto played a far better game tonight than they did in uh, game three out here. They had enough chances to win. They couldn't beat Mr. McLean. He had that cement wall between the goal pipes. It's a great feeling when your team trusts your goalie. He reminds me of Richard Brodeur in 1982. We'd say on the bench, shoot till your arms get tired. You're not going to beat him. Boy, he looks solid in there. And we're going to have a chance to listen to him now as he joins Ron McLean. All right, thank you, Harry and Bob. Kirk, 29 saves again. Uh, this is getting to be routinely brilliant. Uh, tell me how you uh, saw the game tonight. Well, we didn't have the effort tonight. I don't think that we wanted to. We, we, we worked hard, but we didn't uh, really accomplish anything. But we got the win. We gutted it out and, uh, and found a way to win. And, and I think, um, you know, we're going to have to play a lot better if we want to uh, go on. Right, Toronto's got to be a little heartbroken because to, to me that would be a game Pat Burns would want to hang and hang in and uh, you really broke their back. Uh, tell me about some saves you remember. A lot of shots high, I thought, early uh, in the game and you probably enjoy that. There, there was, a, f there was a, f a few that were, uh, you know, in the first period where they had a couple of uh, a number of situations where they took slappers off the wing and I was able to, to get a hold on. Maybe uh, the first shot of the game was kind of a, a cut-in breakaway. I, I don't know who it was, but I was able to steal that aside. So. If you stop them from scoring earlier, earlier you have a pretty good uh, chance to win because they control the lead very well and, and they make it tough on you. That was Chris Govadaris, his first game of the playoffs, and boom, he's got speed. He was in, uh, and you made that save. Bill Berg had a chance. We're going to take a look at that, and uh, I don't remember it. See if you do. This is in the third period where he, where he caught up high, and it got me, kind of handcuffed me a little bit, and then I think that was a uh, killer that was coming in to try and jam the rebound, and, and right after that, they got a shot from the, from the slot, I believe, where I was able to to kick it out with my uh, left, my right pad. There's your shutout string. It's 135-23. Uh, Dave Ellett's the last guy to beat you. We'll talk about your defense, but we were going to mention Mike Fountain the other day. You were <laughs> saying how he's been great uh, doing most of the puck stopping here uh, in the spring, and I said he reminds me of you. Do you see that when you watch him? Well, we both uh, come from the same schooling in, in, uh, through Oshawa, uh, Ian Young, who uh, who uh, brought us up and was our coach and still you know, gives us a hand here and there. We, we do a, a goalie school back in Whitby, Ontario, uh, Ian Young's goaltender school that we do. So we're in, we're in good, uh, good hands there, so we, we're kind of similar that way. Don Cherry talks about him all the time. Tell me about him. What's his uh, Well, what's his we secret? were actually on Don's show. Uh, Ian's been on a couple times, and uh, he had Ian and myself on once before. And, uh, you know, he, he's, he's really a teacher of the game. He, he studies the game very well, and, and he's, he's uh, got uh, good natural ability. He, he lost his eye, obviously. He played with Bobby Orr. And, in, uh, in Oshawa in those days, and, and uh, I believe it was Mickey Redmond that caught him with a slapper those days without mass. So that, that kind of ended his career. He tried to come back, but uh, wasn't able to. So he went on to, uh, you know, finish his schooling and what have you. But uh, he's a he's a lover of the game, and he loves to you know lend a hand whenever he can. And, and we've uh, certainly become uh, great friends uh, away from the rink since uh, my days in junior. Isn't that nice for him? Wasn't there a goalie, Larry Dick, or somebody had a one eye and managed to make it? To I, I don't know. I don't know. You don't, you don't know that story? I seem to remember. Maybe Grapes will know. We'll ask him <laughs> afterwards. Let's talk a bit about uh, your puck handling tremendously again tonight. Uh, it's a little adventurous. I'm trying to throw it up uh, the boards with uh, the, the leaf speed, but uh, you're really helping your guys. Well, uh, you know, if I can move it up, uh, if they can give me an outlet uh, and uh, force their players to come to me and, and, give, and, and get in the open space, it makes it easier on defense, you know, from getting their their face crash you know, into the end glass there and, and we can t uh, turn the transaction from defense to offense and try and catch them uh, sleeping. Do you get inspired watching uh, Brodeur and Richter on the off night or do you pay any attention? I've been watching a little bit, not too much. Uh, I maybe get a little caught up in it. I'm a, I'm a big hockey fan but uh, I try to stay away from it on the off days. I don't want to uh, boggle my mind too much with, with hockey. I want to you know, relax a little bit when we don't have to play, and then the days that we do play, let's uh, start concentrating. That's an excellent point. I hope my executive producer, Ron Harrison, <laughs> understands uh, the validity of that comment. Well, you've got four shutouts. We're going to look at the list of names, and you're in some select company here. Uh, Mike Richter, of course, has moved into that bracket. Felix Potvan's got three. Dominic Hasek had a great year, uh, and you can see uh, also on that... Uh, Shutout list, Chris Osgood. Boy, there's a guy that uh, he really played great, took a lot of flack for that game yeah. seven. That must make you uh, sick when you see a goaltender under the gun like that. Well, you know, when you get into playoff hockey, it, it seems to be the one person that everybody looks to. And, and you know, I, I'm not saying that you don't need good goaltender to get through, but uh, there's a lot of other efforts that have to be put forth uh, to get you through to the, to the Stanley Cup or to win a Stanley Cup. And, and sometimes uh, there's a little bit too much unfair pressure put on the goaltender. But, uh, you know, that's the media and that's the fans, but then you have to live with that with being a pro athlete. How about your folks? Are they upset that you're leading Toronto 3-1? to one or? 
Oh, I don't think so. I think they're probably pretty happy. I think they're trying to steer as, few, as many friends as they can over to the Vancouver side. Well, it was a great piece TSN did at the All-Star game when you played there, getting them involved. So uh, I'm sure they're happy, and uh, so are all Canucks fans. Another great, great effort. Congratulations. Thanks, Kirk McLean. Okay, Bob and Harry, we'll send it to you as we watch uh, the masked man here with his shutout again this evening. Take a bow, and then we'll bring Don Cherry in after we hear from you upstairs in the booth. No, no question about it. A great night for Kirk McLean, and there's another one of his big saves in this hockey game a 2 nothing. Tonight on Sports Base you want another look at the barn burner game four we got it. The Blazers and Laval do battle for junior hockey's biggest prize. And in the NBA the Knicks try to stop the raging bull. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Sports Page. At the beginning of the Canucks Leafs series, these two teams didn't really know each other that well enough to uh, hate one another. Sure, there was the East-West rivalry, but that was being played out in the papers and not really on the ice. But now, heading into today's Game 4, there was finally some real dislike, especially after Team Hunter flattened Doug Gilmore on Friday night. And the Canucks had to be ready right off the bat because the Leafs came out with some jump. But Kirk McLean sent the message right away. If you're going to take a shot, boys, you better make it a good one. He was a as calm and as cool as always, making hard Wendell Clark wrist shots seem like absolutely no big deal. The Leafs had some good chances in the first, but most of them were from the outside. And you know the routine by now. McLean stops those, and the Canucks clear the rebound. He stopped 11 shots in the first. As for Vancouver, they had some good chances to get that all-important first goal. Here's a scramble in the first period. And look at Cliff running. One chance right there in the slot. Then he gets over to the side of the net for another chance. Cliff running. What a game that guy had. Scoreless after one. Second period. Here come the Leafs. Short hand and two on one. Crucial Niski shoots it high and wide and they missed on the rebound. The Canucks dodged a bullet there, but they came right back down the ice. Here's Borey dropping it for Jeff Brown with a howitzer. And Potvin had to reach back to snag that one. And check out the replay from the old net cam there. It was a real duel. McLean and Potvin, great action. There's a big hit from Linden there, but the Leafs break out. It's going to be Mike Gartner all by himself and he shot it high and wide. Oh, baby, how many times does Gartner miss one of those? Not off. Still scored us. Now we're into the third, and here comes running again. He's on the fly. He put a great pass over to Gillen. just missed. Then he gets the rebound out to Murray Craven. Another save. Great saves by Potvin, but I can't say enough about running tonight. Time becoming a factor in the third. Here the Leafs again. Bill Berg shoots. Handcuffs McLean. There's the rebound. Osborne shoots. Another save. McLean. This was probably the closest Toronto came to a goal right here. Wendell let it go. McLean had it, but he didn't know where, and Gil more couldn't jam it through. Now, just over two minutes to go, and here it comes. Ronning is going to give to Mameso. Surge with a sweet little pass to Ronning, and he scores. Cliff Ronning, he sure earned it. He just skated his butt off tonight, and it was 1-0, but it wasn't over. There was the time left on the clock, and now the Buds were throwing everything they had at the Leafs, and there were some tense moments for Canuck fans as it danced around the goal crease in there, but they managed to clear it. Now, there was less than a minute to go. Pat Burns had put the extra attacker on. The puck is centered, but it's cleared by Diddick. Pavel was after it, and absolutely nobody was going to catch him. Bure with an empty netter to put this one away. The Vancouver Canucks are now just one win away from the Stanley Cup Finals. And Bure now leads the playoff goal scoring race with 13 goals as he extends his point streak to 13 games. McLean rocks solid again in the line of running. Mameso and Jelena look dangerous all night, mainly because of number seven. Now for some post game reaction, here's Paul Carson. Dave, the story of Game 4 has to be uh, Kirk McLean. Fourth shutout of the playoffs, uh, second of this series. He's gone over 135 minutes without allowing a goal. And uh, the Leafs have got to be wondering what they've got to do to get one by Captain Kirk. We talked to him in our post-game interviews. We also talked to the big Irishman, Pat Quinn. Well, it was a, for two periods, boy, we look like a pretty scared, scared to lose hockey club. They uh, took it to us in every phase. and. Uh, 
and uh, they got us basically uh, playing a stand around game which plays plays uh, certainly to there that's how they got their hundred points uh, forcing teams to stand around and we weren't using any of our assets either uh, either because we couldn't get free or wouldn't get free and uh, and Kirk had to be awful good to, to keep us alive all the way through that and also in the third uh, we were playing a lot better in the third finally generated some chances but we gave some pretty good ones the other way I said before it comes it comes from everybody in front of me also um, you know when you see guys out there bumping and grinding and just blocking shots and, and grinding out along the boards and in the corners and getting their knocks and bangs and making good plays it makes you feel good and, and it, it rubs off I mean uh, it's it's a sort of a confidence builder, I guess you could say, and confidence brings breeds confidence. Pat, after the game, said that your line was clearly the uh, the top line uh, on the ice tonight, and uh, you guys were rewarded with that big goal at the end. Well, I think uh, we knew that we were getting chances, and in the past, and you know, since we played Dallas uh, and Calgary, I guess we were playing against Newandike, playing against uh, uh, Madano, and then Gilmore. So, you know, we were thinking a lot of defense, but we we saw tonight that. Pat wanted to go with uh, Trevor and wear down maybe Doug Gilmore a bit. So it was up. It was very important for our line to have some good chances offensively, and we did that. And, uh, you know, regardless of who scored that last goal for our line, uh, it was myself, Marty, and uh, Sergio working very hard all night to get it. So Mark Hebsher from our global affiliate in Toronto joins me. Uh, Mark Pat Quinn saying that uh, the Canucks looked like a team that was afraid to win. They looked very tentative, very nervous, and he feels very fortunate they were able to get out of there with the 2-0 victory. Well, it's a nice thing for Pat Quinn to say, but when you've got a goaltender playing as well as Kirk McLean, I think that, uh, you know, the rest of the team feeds off him. He had to make a couple of big saves. He also got lucky when the Maple Leafs shot wide on a couple of occasions on two-on-ones, and when you haven't scored in two games, you better bury your chances when you get them. Naturally, the Maple Leafs are very disappointed because they feel, and I think everyone else, they, they don't win, didn't win this game. To be down 3-1 to a team playing as well as Vancouver is almost uh, an impossible task to come back. However, the Canucks did do it against Calgary three times in overtime, so anything's possible. And the Maple Leafs feel that they're confident that they can come back once again in Game 5 with their backs to the wall. I talked to Doug Gilmore about that very thing. Uh, hockey cliche, no, you the game. Let's look at the next game. That's the most important one. You faced elimination twice in the San Jose series. Came through. Do you have, I guess you got a draw on that experience. That wasn't that long ago. Well, again, let's not uh, get ahead of ourselves here. We want to take one at a time. And um, you know, we played well tonight. Give a lot of credit to their backstop or back there, Kirk McLean. He played unbelievable again. And you know, we got to get to him somehow. How do you do that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We got to get to him somehow. Vancouver come back from three games to one and won three overtime games or whatever so no team has ever done um, uh, flew into San Jose we won the, the the fourth game we lost the fifth game so we lose three and four here if we win five we go back home in the same situation so we're just uh, we're keeping our heads up we know we played a great hockey game tonight uh, two teams played well uh, we had a lot of shots. We had some chances. Uh, our defense played well. Our goaltending played well. I think, uh, the, you know, they scored with two minutes left in the game. It was just a, a sad to see a team has to lose. You know, one team has to lose when both teams play pretty well. We got a late one like that. It's pretty satisfying. Uh, we, we, we didn't have the greatest of game tonight, but we kept plugging away, and uh, Cliffy got a big one. I made a pass to Serge, and he's good at giving the give and go heads up play, and I just went to the net, and he gave me a beautiful pass. So. He, he read it. You didn't even have to call for it. No, it's something we've been, you know, we've been playing quite a few years together, so we got a feel for each other. Felix, is that as tough a loss as you've had to endure? Well, I mean, every every loss is tough. I mean, we, we were close tonight, but like I said, I mean, we are we're disappointed, but we're not discouraged yet. I mean, we know we can come back and uh, we just got to play the next uh, same game the next one. It's tough because we knew we played well, but uh, also positive in that we played well. And we know we can play well and win, so uh, this is just going to be a positive. Thanks, Chris. This is going to be a positive going into the next game. We knew we'd come in here, we worked hard, uh, we played well, so uh, it's a positive for our next game. Tell me your thoughts on this one. Well, it's kind of felt like three periods of overtime to tell you the truth it was uh, uh, a real tight game right from the start and, and it seemed like no team wanted to make a mistake and it was real close checking they took it to you in the first uh, 40 minutes and I might suggest that's a, a credit to them but also a bit of apprehension or nerves on your part or what well you know I, they may have had more shots I don't know if they really had the better chances but um, I think that uh, we were a little tentative definitely to start out with I think that one thing we didn't do was sacrifice our defensive positioning we remained uh, in a good spot defensively, but weren't real generating too much in the offense.
Mavericks have now taken a three game to one lead in the series with the Leafs with a two nothing victory in game four. The winning goal coming late in the third period from Cliff Ronnie. You know we were thinking a lot of defense but we, we saw tonight that Pat wanted to go with uh, Trevor and wear down maybe Doug Gilmore a bit. So it was up. It was very important for our line to have some good chances offensively and we did that and uh, you know regardless of who scored that last goal for our line uh, it was myself Marty and uh, Sergio working very hard all night to get it. You know when you see guys out there bumping and grinding and just blocking shots and, and grinding out along the boards and in the corners and getting their knocks and bangs and making good plays it makes you feel good and, and it, it rubs off I mean uh, it's it's a sort of a confidence builder I guess you could say and confidence brings breeds confidence. Well I think right now everybody's disappointed in here because we thought we played pretty well tonight so it's, it's not that we're thinking that we're going to lose we're not thinking that at all we're ready to come back next game but at this point in time um, now we're trying to make sure that everybody's staying positive in this in this dress room and we'll start all over. For two periods boy we look like a pretty scared scared to lose hockey club they uh, took it to us in every phase and uh, and uh, they got us basically uh, playing a uh, stand around game which plays plays uh, certainly to there that's how they got their hundred points uh, forcing teams to stand around and we weren't using any of our assets either uh, either because we couldn't get free or wouldn't get free. Uh, I don't think we're we played that great today they uh, they came on they, they they took it pretty hard and uh, you know we uh, we slugged it out until the end there and we got a, a big goal by uh, by Cliffy and you know, Serge Momesso and uh, Marty, they've been playing great, and it was just a matter of time before they got one, and what a perfect time. When you get down to the five-minute mark in the third period, it's basically overtime, so we we're just we were patient enough, and we are just fortunate enough to get the break. It was a close check-in game from both sides. It wasn't much openings, and the opportunities you did have, you had to get them, and we just couldn't put ours away. And Momesso was, uh, was coming with the puck, and uh, I am two-on-one. I got to play a shooter, and he made just a perfect pass to running, and uh, he had the open net. The Canucks can now advance to the Stanley Cup final Tuesday night in Game 5 right here in the Pacific Coliseum, something they haven't done in 12 long years. David Pratt, TSN, Vancouver. Our Rob Sinclair is in New York and has a preview of Game 5 of the Eastern Conference Final. That's coming up a little later on in the show. But for now, while the Canucks are just a win away from returning to the Stanley Cup Final for the first time since 1982, another BC team is reigning supreme in the junior ranks. The Kamloops Blazers are quickly establishing themselves as the strongest junior hockey franchise in the country. The Blazers facing the host Laval Titan in the Memorial Cup Final, looking for their second title in the last three years. Luc LaChapelle, the head referee in this game, despite all the problems surrounding him in this series. Early first, Rod Stevens, the great individual effort, splits the defense, tries to go fivefold, but Manny Fernandez comes up with a big stop. A little later on, Louis Dumont deep into the Titan zone, tries to center it. Fernandez tries to cover the puck, but instead he kicks it into his own net, and it's 1 0 Kamloops. A little physical in the first period. Nolan Baumgartner is nailed by Daniel Gounod. Into the second period now. Another miscue for Fernandez. This time behind the net, and Louis Dumont centers it to Ryan Huska. He puts in the wide open net. 2 0 Blazers. Then with a the score, 3 0 Kamloops. Laval on the power play. Michel Gall with the point shot. It's deflected by Daniel Gounod out in front. Tatin on board. It is 3 1. Into the third period now. 4 2 Kamloops. The Tatin four checking deep behind the Blazers net. Steve Passmore coughs up the puck. Daniel Gounod is out in front to bang it in and make him pay for the mistake. Laval closed the gap to four to three. But that's as close as the Titan would come. They're disappointed, but the Kamloops Blazers, they're celebrating. Passmore receives congratulations from his teammates as they loft the Memorial Cup up high, winning their second consecutive, winning their second Memorial Cup in the last three years. The Western Hockey League teams have now won 11 of the last 23 Memorial Cups.